Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing the new Banished Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which, after we choose our starting hand, our entire deck gets banished. Now, the meta for this event is pretty well established, and for that reason, that means it is very effective to use a counter meta deck, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So let's go give it a look. So the Banished Seasonal Event has a very established meta, and therefore, today we'll be using a Monsters Arrakis Swarm counter meta deck. And that meta is to use Nilfgaard to play Tibor, which is just a pure 13 points since there's no cards in your opponent's deck, and Imperial Golem, which is 12 points with no downside because, again, there's no cards in your opponent's deck. Which is why this deck focuses on lots of tall removal, then spawns in lots of units rather than having one or two really big units to avoid the tall punish that many people run in this event. So we have a bunch of cards to remove our opponent's biggest units like Villain Treadmirth, Karathi Heatwave, Curse of Corruption, Glorious Hunt, and potentially even Predatory Dive. Then we'll spawn in some drones on our side with either a Rockus Nest, or by using a Leader Ability Charge to spawn in a drone and using that as our target for Spontaneous Evolution. We also have some Death Wish units like the Andrega Eggs, and the Night Wraith which we can consume to spawn in more units, which we can consume with the Arrakis Queen, and if we consume an Insectoid then we also get Arrakis Nest for even more drones spawned in, then more drones and more drone boosting with Arrakis Behemoth, as well as with Yennefer in the range row, Zoltan Scoundrel in the range row, Bone Talisman, and once we only have four cards in our hand, also the Chimera. One other combo worth noting is that we do have the Catechin, which can spawn in Ekimaras, and we can get this off cooldown more quickly if we combine it with Crimson Curse. So there's a look at the deck, and like I said, it is a combination of tall removal and spawning in lots of units and then boosting those units, which makes it really effective against the meta decks in this event that tend to have lots of tall cards and tall removal. So let's go see it in action. Alright, going up against Nilfgaard here. And we'll go first. Okay, and we have Katakin plus Crimson Curse. I think that's how we're going to want to start in round one. Then we have some tall removal with things like Villain Treadmirth, Karate Heat Heatwave, Curse of Corruption, and potentially even Predatory Dive. But we don't have much in the way of consumption other than, yeah, Rockus Queen, although that's probably going to be just for consuming a drone, so... Don't think Night Wraith is the best option here. A Rockus Nest might be preferable. Well, I guess we have another Rockus Nest. We'll swap this out. A Rockus Behemoth might be a little bit better, give us more boosting. Let's begin with the Catechin. And let's use its ability to spawn in an Akimara and use our Stratagem as well. That way we have 13 points, so we could even pass after this turn. But if they do play, and ideally, we keep one of our units because that one was going to be a great combo with crimson curse so in that case let's use one charge of our leader ability here to get us a drone and with that drone let's use a raucous queen to consume it and since it's an insectoid we'll get an raucous nest giving us a lot more drones oh and they're enslaved six by the way Gilard, uh okay it does actually hit villain treadmirth which is something Usually that would do almost nothing against us. You still have a 15 point lead, which is difficult for them to make up in one turn unless they combine that with the leader ability charge. So we could consider passing here. In fact, I think that probably is the right play. Okay, then it's Vilgaforts. But we do still have the lead unless they combine it with a leader ability charge as we suspected they might do. So yes, they will win round one, but they go a card down and a leader ability charge to make it happen. And after having played one more card than us, they will dry pass here. And which of our cards is most disposable? I'm thinking we'll definitely want Predatory Dive early in round three. Villain Treadmirth, even though it has just one power, is still a way of getting removal. So it might be worth saving that as well. I guess it might still be Predatory Dive here, because that's probably less value than Heat Wave or Villain Treadmirth. So we'll do this. And although there's nothing to destroy on our opponent's side, it does at least give us a one power drone. So that is enough. And now we begin with a Rockets Nest. Which would have been perhaps the other card we would have considered using in round two as our throwaway, but we didn't have that many ways to spawn in additional units. Okay, then it's Bribery. With which they get Zoltan. I assume they're going to go Melee Row to destroy these drones. That they do. 
So we do still have leader ability charges. So that's a way we can get more drones. And that is perhaps what we're going to go with here. Let's use all of them. And then combine that with the Rockus Behemoth. To spawn in more and boost them all in the process. Okay, then it's Sweers, which will seize a three power unit. Not a huge deal. I think this might be the time to either go Crimson Curse in their melee row to maximize the amount of time that that has, because it is five turns worth of Blood Moon. Or we go Yennefer, because we do have significantly more units than they have right now. I think we go Crimson Curse, though. Because that will give us three more units. And then it's Battle Preparation, which is not bad, because we do have some Tall Removal here. But before we start going that route, let's do Yennefer in the range row to boost everyone. And since we have way more units than they have, that means we get way more boost than they get. And then it's Imperial Golem, so again, more tall units. And we are prepared to destroy some of those. So let's go Heat Wave here, because I want to make sure that we remove this Imperial Golem rather than Sweers, since Sweers is in this row with Blood Moon. And they'll pass. So I think they realize that there is no way they're catching us after they lost their biggest unit. And of course, we had more ways of destroying Sweers and whatever else they had. So we'll take the win. All right, so going against monsters here. And they'll go first. Okay, so we have two Night Wraiths here. And I think that is very much overkill because we don't have much in the way of consumption outside of Arrakis Queen. And we'd ideally use Arrakis Queen on an Insectoid, not on a Spectre. So I think we've got to dump at least one, if not two of you. Okay, they'll go with the Phoenix for some carryover. Which might be worth heat waving so that they don't have that carryover. I think we go that route. So we do still have some tall removal with, say, Hill and Trentonmirth, even after having used Heat Wave. Alright, they'll pass, and I was gonna say it was potentially worth throwing down one leader ability charge so that if they did pass after that, we could have won round one on even cards. We do have a fair bit of drone spawning cards here, and in a long round, we would probably run out of space, so let's use a Rockus Nest, I suppose. And that, of course, means we'll win round one. Okay, and so we are a card down here in round two, but I think we might be able to push ever so slightly here if, at the very least, we play Villain Tretmer, and in doing so, destroy whatever other card they try to play against us. Because as I said, in long rounds, we can start to run low on space. Villain Tretmer, of course, doesn't take up much space. Oh, that is a well-done predatory dive, though. Except they do not have a rocket swarm, which means they do not spawn in a one power unit here. So they are in a similar situation to what we were in, in round one, where they could really use just having one point on the board so that they don't have to play an additional card to win this round. Though we still do have a lot of stuff that takes up space here. So you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try pushing a little bit more. We go one drone here, and then we go spontaneous evolution. And then we might go Rockus Behemoth in the melee row after this, depending on what they respond with. Denecarat. Okay. So it is not enough single-handedly for them to catch us, so they will need to play one more card here. But I'm thinking that that was an important card for them to play at the beginning of round three that they did not expect to have to commit here. So I think we might still be able to bleed out some important stuffs. And we can put up some points pretty quickly here if we either go Arrakis Behemoth in the melee row, Arrakis Queen to consume one of these drones, maybe even the one that has lead on it, maybe even another spontaneous evolution. So plenty of options. Let's go Arrakis Behemoth, I suppose. Spawn in more drones, boost them all. Gives us, after the bleed, a 12-point lead. And there's Unseen Elder. Okay, so we, yes, have gotten rid of what is probably their best card. So I think now we pass. 
especially because I think we saw they do not have Devotion, because they played a Phoenix in round one, so that means Unseen Elder is not nearly as strong, and they do need to play something else here. It's gonna be Northern Wind today. I was gonna say Matic. You better not be using Matic in this event. So that means we'll be on even cards here, and we got rid of one of their best cards, so round three is looking better for us. Okay, then it's a Flutter. That can get pretty big, and we did lose out on our toll removal after having committed Villain Trentmirth in round two, so that is one downside to the bleed that we did in round two. But now let's use a drone to create a target for spontaneous evolution. Okay, then they'll give Undying Thirst to this drone here. Giving it a lot of bleed, but that could be a target for Arrakis Queen. Does mean this Arrakis Queen is going to get fairly tall, which is a little bit concerning in case they have tall removal. Because we've seen they do have some control options here. So it's a bit of a risk, but I think it might still be worth going that route. Because that is going to mitigate a lot of bleed damage. And because that is an insectoid, that means we'll get an Arrakis Nest. I think we have just enough space in our melee row to fill this up. And they're using their leader ability charges here. Plus Adrenaline Rush now. Again, Tall Rubble would be so great if we still had some. So great to get rid of a 21 point Flutter. But now, let's use the remaining leader ability charges in our range row to maximize our number of units. And then either go Bone Talisman or technically Zoltan Scoundrel first is perhaps a little bit preferable. We boost these guys, then we have one more unit on the board for Bone Talisman use on our next turn. Then Undying Thirst for more bleed, and that does make this Flutter even bigger. <laughs> Just rub it in our face that we used all of our tall removal in the last round. But okay, now Bone Talisman. And I'm wondering if this is going to be a Regis for their last card. If so, it could be quite big. It might be, but we still had a 15 point lead. So they forfeit, because I don't think they could catch us. All right, so going up against Nilfgaard here, and we'll go first. Okay, and we have Katakin, plus Crimson Curse, and that is a nice combo. We'll probably lead off with that in round one. Then lots of ways to remove our opponent's units, which is great against Nilfgaard, because they probably have some really tall units. And then we can spawn in some stuffs so with Spontaneous Evolution and Arrakis Nest, and then boost them with Zoltan, Arrakis Behemoth, and not really sure we're going to need Andrega Warrior, because we don't have any Deathwish units at the moment. So, I mean, even more removal with Heat Wave. It's a little bit overkill, perhaps, but we'll give it a shot. So we'll start with the Catechin. Use this ability to spawn in an Ekimara and also use Magic Lamp. Okay, then they'll go and lock the Catechin, which is unfortunate because I was about to use Crimson Curse which would have synergized well with the Catechin. We may still opt to go that route, to be honest. It's still a decent point slam, and there will at least be one unit that gets hit by the bleed. And if the round goes long, then it's going to be a pretty big factor. So, sure, we'll go for it. It's always a bit of a balancing act with Crimson Curse, because if you play it this early, then they're probably going to play every other card in the other row. Whereas if you wait to play it a little bit later in the round, you might not have all the time to trigger all the turns for Blood Moon, but at least you can more easily get multiple cards in that Blood Moon. Okay, and I think we may even want to pass here. We have a decent sized lead, and of course this Alba Armored Cavalry will continue to get damaged by the Blood Moon. And I'm not sure we want to commit any of our tall removal here. And because we don't have much in the way of ways to spawn in additional units right now, we want to save those things for a future round. Yeah, they'll go with Tibor, which is not enough by itself. Oh, except plus the boost from Nazca Sergeant and leader ability. They can make it happen, but that's a little bit more of an investment than they might have been planning to do in round one. They will still win it in round one, though. And then they go first with their defender. So they're pushing pretty hard after having played one more card than us in round one, which is a little bit odd. Let's go with Predatory Dive here to remove this defender and, in return, get a one-power drone. 
forcing them to play another card if they want to continue to push in round two. And it's Imperial Diplomacy. Burn Drega Larva. And I think this is a losing battle for them if they want to push because they did play one more card than us and maybe they're trying to rely on using a 12-point Imperial Golem as their one card for round three, thinking that will be enough. But if we save something like Heat Wave or Curse of Corruption or Glorious Hunt as our last card and just use an Arrakis Swarm Charge, then that should be sufficient. So let's go with either Arrakis Nest or with Spontaneous Evolution here. And it's Kahir. And that is a card we can definitely destroy because he does have the highest base power of all these cards out here. So I think this is probably worth using because we do have other sources of removal, so don't need to be too protective of this. And of course, we don't want to be boosting all of our drones if they have Kahir down. So let's do this. Okay, then it is the Imperial Golem, so that it was the card I was expecting them to play, just I was expecting it to come out in round three. So they are continuing to be very greedy with this round two push. So I think that means that we probably can use either Curse of Corruption or Heat Wave here. So I guess let's go Curse of Corruption since it is definitely the highest unit. And it's Rico, which is a five. And at this point, I think it's okay to go Arrakis Behemoth here. They'll go Yenvo, and uh, well, it is a three-point unit that they stole. It wasn't even our tallest unit, so that was kind of silly. We're still in the lead, and they only have one card left. And assuming that's a unit, we can heat wave whatever it is. So I think we just go either Zoltan or Arrakis Nest here. just to guarantee that we fend off the round two bleed attempt. But we will win round two. They were very aggressive, but as I was saying, I don't think it was worth them giving that a shot. Okay, now for round three, we will heat wave on our last turn, whatever it is that they play here, assuming that it is just a single unit. That means what we should do now is use our leader ability, spawn in a bunch of drones, and then we'll use Zoltan to boost those drones. Like so. That's 15 points right there, and it is not enough. They won't even play that last card. We don't even need the Heat Wave. All right, so going up against monsters here. And we'll go first. Okay, so I do like going with one of our Death Wish units when we're on blue coin, so Night Wraith or Indrega Eggs, although having both of them might be overkill. So let's get rid of you. And then if we can combine Crimson Curse with a Catechin, that would also be amazing, though we don't have that right now. Not sure I'm willing to risk getting rid of any of our units spawning, though. Maybe we get rid of Predatory Dive and get Curse of Corruption. Okay, Tall Removal is not bad, I suppose. So let's start with the Indrega Eggs and use Magic Lamp. They'll go Crimson Curse. So let's go with the Arrakis Queen here. To consume, then drag eggs. It will, of course, spawn in those drones in the melee row where the Blood Moon is active, but let's use Arrakis Nest in the range row. We're getting that Arrakis Nest because we consumed an Insectoid. Okay, then it's Catechin. This is the other combo we were hoping to get. We only got one half of it. We could return the favor on them, however, if we wanted to. However, doing so would take up a lot of space in this range row, which may not be something that we are keen on doing because I was originally planning on using the Indrega Warrior to consume this Arrakis Queen and spawn in another Indrega Eggs in this row. If we still go that route. That will spawn in a lot of stuffs here. And then it's a Necarat, so yeah, lots of bleed. They're trying to set up this Catechin for a lot of unit spawning. And so I think what we do here is we probably go Yennefer in the range row, boost all of our units since we have a lot more than they do, and then leave it at that. 
We could, yes, use some leader ability charges in our melee row to get even more drones out here to get boosted, but I think we want to minimize the number of cards in this row still. And I'm hoping this is enough to deter them from playing additional cards in this round, but we'll see. Because this Katakin is now off cooldown, so yes, they will play. And it's a Flutter, which will also get pretty big. But I think this is where we take our chances, leaning on this lead that we have right now, hoping that it takes them more than one car to catch up to us if they want to go that route. It's Orianna. You have a lot of bleed. So they may have enough setup for her. They do, by the looks of things. Wow. Impressive combo. And that means they'll take the round one win. Okay, and they did play one more card than us in round one, so they'll drive past here. And which of our cards is most disposable? Possibly one of our spontaneous evolutions? Of course, we do want to make sure that we have the chance to spawn in a lot of units, but we do have another spontaneous evolution. We'll get a few more drones in with the Rockus Behemoth, and we also have all of our leader ability charges. So I think using one of these here is not the end of the world. However, we can't use it if we don't have a target, so it does mean we need to use one leader ability charge. Okay, it's slightly worse in that case, but I think it is still the best option. So that means we'll win round two. And now we are probably looking to start off this round with more or less the same idea here. So let's go spawn in a drone and then use spontaneous evolution on that drone. Okay, then it's a flutter. which will start to get pretty big. And I think what we want to do now is play Crimson Curse because otherwise we're going to run out of time to benefit from the bleed effect here. Obviously it means that they are probably not going to play many other units in this range row. But we do prefer playing in the range row because we're going to spawn in these Ekimaras and we want to have this melee row be pretty much entirely insectoids to set up the Arrakis Behemoth. And okay, then it's an Alp for more bleed. And so this Flutter is going to get pretty huge, but that means it could turn into a very solid target for Curse of Corruption. And this will almost certainly be our last turn play. Now let's spawn in one more drone here in the melee row and use Arrakis Behemoth. Spawn in a couple more and boost them all. Okay, then it's Feast of Blood. We'll get rid of one of those units in our melee row. It's actually a good thing that they got rid of the Arrakis Behemoth because... We were about to use Chimera, which was not going to boost the Arrakis Behemoth. However, if we spawn in another drone here, that will get boosted by Chimera. So let's play this. And in some ways, it would be good to consume this drone to reduce the bleed damage that we take by one. However, that would get this Chimera up to a nine, which would be higher than the Flutter, once you consider that this Flutter is going to take damage from bleed. Yes, it's likely that it will get boosted at the end of their turn when they either use a leader ability charge or some other source of bleed, but there's a non-zero chance that this Chimera ends up the highest unit, and that means our Curse of Corruption would backfire on us. So let's not do that. Okay, so Regis Hire Vampire. We do have some fairly highly boosted cards. Well, actually, good thing we chose to consume the one power drone, I suppose. Because that means our highest boosted card is going to be, well, this drone is going to take a damage from the bleed, so actually only two is going to be our highest boost. So now what we do is we go a raucous swarm here, and, uh, I mean, shouldn't really matter where we spawn this in, but we'll use Curse of Corruption to remove this 11-point flutter. That is a pretty huge difference maker. The question will be, once they use this leader ability and play what might be Regis as their finisher, will that be enough? There's the order ability. There's their last leader ability charge that spawns in Inekimara. It is Regis Reborn. I don't know if that's sufficient, though. It's close, but we will hold on for the win. So there's a look at a Monsters Araka Swarm deck for the new Banished Seasonal Event. If you liked the video, then make sure to the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.